everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, M. Graham Sews. This tutorial is for this really beautiful bag called the Riva Mini Backpack by Bagstock Designs. This backpack is filled with lots of features, so let's discuss some of them. First of all, when you look at the front of the bag, you'll see that there is this flap with a twist lock. When you open it up, you have a slip pocket here. And then inside there, inside that pocket, and it's hard to see, there is a zipper pocket here. So you can put your phone in there or anything that you want to be able to keep safe tucked inside. And then you have this little extra slip pocket. You can put some sunglasses or anything you want inside there. You turn it closed. On the back of the bag, we have our backpack straps and our handles. So this is like a convertible bag because you have backpack straps. And you also have this crossbody strap, which if you tighten it, you could actually wear it as a shoulder bag. And you could probably even use one of your backpack straps to make it into a shoulder bag as well. By shoulder bag, I mean wear it on your one shoulder and carry it like a purse on the one shoulder. The bag is closed with a zipper on top and I use two pulls. However, you can use one zipper pull if you want and I do discuss that in the pattern. When we open up the bag, there is a zipper pocket, oops, a zipper pocket right here. And on the other side, there is a divided slip pocket. So I hope you can see it. There you go, you can see it there. So there's the divided slip pocket right there. The bag is finished with binding, so we do do binding. And I walk you through how to do that. I also have an extra little tutorial if you want to watch it now before you really get started or maybe watch all the tutorials. I have a bunch of extra tutorials I'm going to post below in the description so that you can have some extra little bits of information, some extra tips and tricks to make your backpack so that it is easier for you. And I share lots as I'm going along. And speaking as going along or sewing along, this bag tutorial is filmed like a sew along so there are no parts that are cut out or sped up so for example when I'm sewing you see the sewing it's not sped up at all when I'm sewing any of the exterior parts it's not sped up the only time I won't show something on camera is if there's doubles or triples for example the straps I only show you how to make one strap on camera and the rest I go offline off camera and I sew them off camera or construct it off camera because I don't feel you need to sit and watch me do doubles of things like when I attach the gusset to the main panel, I don't show you how to do it on the back because I've already shown you how to attach it and bind it on the main panel, the front main panel. I don't feel that these things need to be re-shown. It just makes the um, tutorial a little bit longer and I don't feel that you need to sit and again watch me do it a second time. If you do need to see it again for more clarification, you can always rewind and go right back to the beginning of where I'm showing you how to do it. This bag, while it looks like it takes a long time, I promise it really doesn't. I I'm kind of shocked at how fast this came together. It's a really awesome bag. This would make a great little trip bag. So if you're out, you know, on a trip and you're touring and looking at places, this would be a great bag to have to carry, you know, a water bottle and some any some other items that you may need on your day out, some snacks or whatever, your wallet. It's really great for that or great for an everyday bag as well. You could probably fit a small tablet in here so you could have a tablet so that pocket inside here. If you don't divide it, your tablet could slip inside that pocket if you want. So it's a really great bag with lots of different options. Maybe a great toddler backpack or for your toddler for a daycare to bring some clothes back and forth to school or to daycare. Really an excellent backpack. You'll really enjoy making this. You'll enjoy that you can do some feature here. So maybe some embroidery or as I did fussy cut it's a really awesome bag I thoroughly enjoyed making this and I think I love it just because it's so bright and fun and pink is not only my thing but I'm really liking this pink I'm really digging it and I'm digging the fabric too and I did a lot of fussy cutting so that you would see certain features of the bag more and in certain spots you'd see the flamingos which match my flamingo poles. I'll put all the information below for the supplies I used, where I can remember which ones where I got what stuff. So I'll link that below in the description as well so that you can find where I've gotten all my fabrics or materials so that you can get them if you really do like them. Again, this is the Riva mini backpack tutorial. So let's get started making our mini backpack. 
So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is very important because oftentimes designers give information regarding different interfacings you can use depending on the materials that you've chosen to make your bag out of. And there's also sometimes information regarding pattern pieces because of materials you're using. They may need to be cut differently. So you'll want to make note of this and also reading through the pattern familiarizes yourself with the pattern itself. To also note, this pattern has lots of features and there's some that can be omitted. So you'll also want to make note of that before you start cutting into your fabrics because you don't want to cut more than you need or not cut enough. So once you have read through the entire pattern, it's time to get cutting all your pattern pieces out and then cut out all your materials. I've gone ahead and cut out all my materials. I've also interfaced all my pattern pieces and I went ahead and make mar made markings. All this information is in the pattern for where the markings are, but because I read through, I went ahead and made markings where I need. So for example, on this lining piece, I made a marking here for where a zipper pocket will go. And the reason why I've done all my markings now is because I don't show any pattern pieces on camera. I don't show rulers, cutting mats, nothing like that. I don't give away any measurements. So you will need to have your pattern open beside you so that you can follow along and know what the measurements are, especially for things like seam allowances or when we're placing pattern pieces together. So I've gone ahead and made all those marks, as I mentioned, and I also like to mark what the pattern piece is. So this is pattern piece Q, and I like to go ahead and mark my centers as well. And this is just handy for lining things up, but it also is handy to have the pattern pieces marked with what the pattern piece is so that when I get to that step in the pattern I know exactly what pattern piece I need because it's marked on the pattern piece and I can also see it on the pattern. I've also gone ahead and folded some of my pieces the way they need to be folded. I will still show you how to fold those when we get to those steps. I've gathered up all my hardware. As I mentioned, there are some pieces that can be omitted, such as the crossbody strap, or you can omit the backpack straps, whatever you choose to do. So if you're just choosing backpack straps, you'll have to make note of that so you have the proper hardware or crossbody strap or doing both. This pattern is bound, so we are going to use binding. I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how to do binding on a bag, make binding. So I will post that below, so the link will be below. You can go ahead and stop this video and go watch that if you want. I'm using pre-made binding for this bag. I just decided to use it. It was just a little bit faster for me. So I've gone ahead and I have my pre-made binding here. I also cut all my zippers to length. So they're right here and I label them with what they will be for. So I've gone ahead and done all that so that I am ready to get started. So once you have all your pattern pieces cut, your interfacings attached like I have here, and all your markings made, if you choose to make those markings ahead of time, if not, not to worry. It does call for it in the pattern and I will let you know when we get to that step when you need to make a mark. But if you've gone ahead and done that, we are ready to get sewing our bag. So the very first thing we need to do is create our exterior front pocket. So that exterior front slip zipper pocket. And I'm just grabbing my pattern pieces for that. And we need our front zipper. So I like to clip all my zippers together just so I don't lose anything when I'm moving everything around. So for this step, you will need one of your front exteriors and you'll notice I did cut my exteriors different. So I cut my exterior back out of this Moon Glow vinyl and my exterior front is out of this Quilting Cotton by Tula Pink. So I'm going to be making that front pocket, which is going to cover most of this. And I just wanted this to sort of peekaboo out. And you'll see what I mean once we get the bag constructed. So the very first thing you need to do, if you haven't done that already, is make the markings on your facing J piece. So go ahead and make those markings. You can also do that now on your N piece as well, because piece N will also need those markings. So you can go ahead and do that now if you want to pause this. That just kind of gets you ahead for the next steps when we go further along. So we're going to start with one of our zipper pocket K pieces. So I've marked this with the K and your zipper. So you need your front zipper, zipper pocket zipper. 
you're going to place the material and you'll notice that I don't have any interfacing on this just to note I'm using a canvas so I didn't need any interfacing this is a waterproof canvas so I decided to do that with my bag it actually helps cut down on cutting time which is great but I decided to do this for my bag just to make it a little bit more waterproof I may keep this one for myself I haven't decided so I just thought it would be nice just to have that on my bag so that is why you won't see any interfacing on mine. If you're using a canvas, you don't need interfacing depending on the canvas you're using, but yours will have the interfacing on the back of these pieces. So we're going to take this zipper and we're going to place it wrong sides against the right side of your K piece. So the wrong side of the zipper is touching the pretty side of the K piece. Pin it at the top, so those top edges align right there. And then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. When you get to that zipper pull, just zip it out of the way so that you don't hit it. And also so that you don't have your zipper foot kind of make a little lump. Or not your zipper foot, your stitching, sorry. We're just going to press this top edge, so I'm just going to press this so that the zipper pocket K piece is pushed away from the zipper. And I'm trying to do this around Buddy, so just like that. So now the zipper is pushed away from the zipper pocket K piece. With your second zipper pocket K piece, you're going to place that one right sides up. And for these pieces, I marked where the top and bottom was, so I would know where the top and bottom is, or just top, sorry, I put a T for top, just to help me when I am putting this together because these K pieces are so almost similar in size, so I didn't want to get confused when I was sewing this all together. So again, wrong side of the zipper against the right side of K, take that buddy. You're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> Trim all your threads. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press this so that the zipper K piece is pushed away from the zipper. So I just open it up. And now when you're looking at this, the right side of your zipper is on the wrong side against the wrong side or facing the wrong side of the K pieces. So I'm just finger pressing these. I don't feel I need to take it to my iron to do. Now we're going to just place this to the side for just one moment. We need to grab the eye piece, so front slip pocket eye piece, and we need to take this piece that we made those markings on, your J piece, and place it so it is right sides against the right side of the eye piece. And you want this centered. So to do that, you can fold your eye piece in half and just create a crease, just like that. Then you can fold your J piece in half and create a crease. And then there's a measurement from the top down that you need to make. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for where that measurement is. And I've already gone ahead and done that. So from the top down is where you're making that mark draw your line and then line up the top edge of your facing with that line and center it. If you're using a material that you cannot press with your iron or put pins through, you put the pins in this box that you drew, just in the center of that box and that'll help when you cut that out you're not having any pinholes anywhere else but in that box and you're cutting that box out anyway so it doesn't even matter if you have pinholes there. So pin it in place centered and now we're going to sew around that whole box that we made. All this box here we're going to sew around it 
And I like to use a slightly shorter stitch length for this than my usual stitch length. So starting in one corner, go all the way around, back stitch it, start and stop. If you do have pins, be careful not to hit them. Now, if you're worried about getting angled stitches in these corners, what you do is, before you turn, put your stitch length to zero, take one stitch, return your stitch length back to the length you were using, turn the corner and sew all the way down to the next corner and repeat that in this next corner and all the other corners as well. And that will help prevent those angled stitches that we sometimes get in corners when we're stitching along. And I started right up at this corner up here, so I'm not going to turn the corner, I'm just going to back stitch in that corner. I went right up to that corner and back stitched. So there you have it. Now you're going to have drawn some V's in these corners. So we're going to start with our seam ripper along the center line you've drawn. And I know I didn't draw the lines, I don't anymore. I just cut in the center so cut right down that center and then you're going to cut those little v's out at the end and i say that they look like y's on each end because you got the stick in the center and then the v's so little v's or little y's so there's one you can see it there i just can't see because buddy's in the way here sorry buddy so there's one and then there's the other so they're both cut on both sides we have those little v's or y's as i like to call them cut in the corners now we need to take this zipper pocket facing and we need to push it through to the wrong side and we're going to need to press this with our iron if you're using a material that cannot be pressed with your iron you can use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place so i'm going to push this through the wrong side and because I'm using this waterproof canvas it's not behaving like quilting cotton would. Yeah, shake a paw. Good girl. Good girl. Give me five. Yeah. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. So I'm trying to press this because I don't want to go press this with my iron and possibly melt this. And it's kind of tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some double-sided tape. And again, if you're using material that you can't press with your iron, you can do this exact same thing. So some double-sided tape. You know what? I'm going to use a slightly thicker one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this with my fingers and press it as good as I can. Yes, thank you. You're gonna be in the way. So I'm putting the double sided tape, yes, thank you. Just under that stitching line. when you have the whole roll stuck to your hand. So I'm just putting it under that, that seam that we made when we stitched this on. And the reason for that is that'll help hold that down for me as well, but it'll also help hold the facing down. So that little extra seam allowance 
the bulk there is all held in place. So see how nice that looks on that side? I'm trying to play with those, eh? So I'm going to repeat that for the second side and I'm going to basically just double side tape this all the way down and if you were doing this with your iron you would just press it so pull it so it is wrong sides together press it with your iron you can even use a bit of spritz on it or steam and that'll help press those really good for you you'll get nice crisp pressed edges so i'm just placing that tape again under that line of stitching And the nice thing about the double-sided tape is if it's a little bit wonky anywhere, you can just pull it back and fix it. So now I'm going to do the short edges. And if this part of the video is not something you want to watch, you can go ahead and fast forward this part till you see me get to the next step, which will be sewing in that zipper pocket we just created. And make sure on the other side there's no wrinkles or anything. What are you looking at? And you may have a different method to do this for if you're using something that you can't press with an iron. Go ahead and use that method. This is just what I do when I have things that I can't press with my iron. So now the pocket is all pressed through. We now need some more double-sided tape because we're now going to put the pocket into the center of this opening. So with your pocket, with the zipper facing right sides up and your pocket K pieces are facing wrong sides up, you're going to center that zipper in your zipper opening. So it's going to go wrong sides against the right side of the zipper and you can center it and you'll know it's centered because your facing is the same length as your zipper or your zipper pockets. No, nope, that's not for buddy. That's not for you. No, nope, it's not for you. No, nope, it's not for buddy. She thinks the tape is for her. Nope, that's not yours. Don't go bug at it. Leave it. Hey. Leave it. So I'm going to center that zipper in this zipper opening. So you want it, the zipper teeth centered in the opening and also center this to your zipper pocket as well. So you'll know it's centered because the edges of the facing will line up with the edges of your zipper and your pocket as well. Hey, leave it alone. And I'm just trying to get this all centered. Again, you want those teeth centered in that opening, but you also want your zipper pocket centered in your um, on your facing so that everything is all lined up or as close to centered as you can get it. Now we're going to stitch around this zipper pocket opening all the way around. And if you don't want any back stitching, what you can do is leave long thread tails. Don't back stitch when you start. Start stitching 
When you get back to where you started, stop in the hole you started in, and this may require you taking a shorter stitch length to get right back into that last, that first hole. And then you'll leave long tails again, and then we'll pull them through and tie them off at, at the back of the pocket so that you won't see that back stitching. So I'll show you what I mean here. So I've left long tails. I'm now going to start stitching. And I'm approaching where my zipper pull is, so I'm just zipping it out of the way. Turn that corner. Now I'm back in that hole I started in, I'm leaving long tails, and now I'm going to pull those thread tails through to the back. And to do that, you just pull on the one back thread, and that will bring a loop from the front thread up and through. And I'm just using the sharp end of my scissors to do this. You can use your seam ripper. thread this is. There we go. It's hard to sometimes get threads to want to cooperate. Now I put them in twos and I just knot it together. I've never had an issue with my knots coming undone. But if you want to be extra secure, I'm just going to cut these so they're all the same length. If you want to be extra secure, you can always add a dab of glue. However, you'll want to let the glue dry before you continue on. You can also add some fray stop or fray tuck if you want. I've, like I said, I've never had an issue with my knots coming undone and I just do it a few times. Just giving it a, a pretty good tug. Just be careful because I have had some, some threads break when I'm doing this. This is a stronger thread so it takes the pulling a little bit more but I know if I pull like that on Gooderman thread it will break. So just be careful because you don't want that to happen. If it does however what you can do is unpick your stitches back until you have long thread tails again. Pull them both through to the back and tie it off then just start stitching where you pulled back to and go all the way back to where you started. Now, when you flip this over, you'll notice that one of the pockets is longer than the other, and that's okay. What we're going to do is we're going to trim that excess off. So we place them so that they are folded together, so they are going to be right sides together right now. And I have some of that tape. I'm just peeling the tape back a bit because I know I'm going to need to sew here, and I don't want to sew through the tape if I don't have to. I want it to hold the pocket down later. So I'm just lining up these side edges so that I can trim this down. Something's going on right here. Start at the bottom. Line up your side edges and then you're going to just trim that off. And you can measure that and take this over to your cutting mat and use your rotary cutter and ruler to cut it. Or just like I did, just follow along with it pinned together and cut it off. Now we're going to sew these side edges. And I just wanna see if we're sewing the bottom. So we're sewing all the way around. We're sewing the sides and the bottom using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So move your lining out of the way. 
You don't want to sew through that lining piece, just through the pocket. And I'm sewing through the facing too as I started at the top. I like to backstitch just for some extra security in those corners. Not so much important when you're sewing up a pocket. Um, I like to make sure I do that when I'm stitching somewhere that I'm going to be turning right sides out after. But in pockets it does add that little bit of strength down at the corners. And there we have it. Our zipper pocket is now attached. You see the wrong side and the right side, we have it all attached. I'm just going to check my bobbin because it was almost empty when I put it in and I just don't want to run out at the, I guess no time is really the right time. So at the wrong time while I'm doing some top stitching. I do have another one ready to go. Now we're going to put this one to the side. We need to grab out the B piece, your C and D piece. So B and C and D look like these. They are mirrored pieces. And you'll have B that looks like this. What we're going to do is you're going to take B, lay it so it is right sides up. And if you're like me and you used a directional print, make sure the bottom stays at the bottom and the top is at the top. The bottom is going to be where the curves of C and D are. So just make sure you place it right sides up. So you're going to take C and you're going to place it right sides together with B and pin it in place. So pin it all the way down that short, that straight edge. I didn't mean to say short, sorry. And you'll want to make sure it's, it's on there good and lined up. Mine's not lining up there. Now it's lined up. I'm just going to take a drink of my coffee. Excuse me. All right. Now we're going to sew this edge, this straight edge that we pinned with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if you're not sure about your seam allowances and you're worried about them not being accurate, what you can do before we start is draw all your seam allowances on your pattern pieces and just stitch right along those drawn lines. Back when I started sewing, I used to do that all the time so that I could make sure I had accurate seam allowances all the time until I learnt where it was on my machine. And then I started measuring and using washi tape to make my measurements for where um, seam allowances are, but that's just a little trick I use. So you would draw your seam allowance and just sti stitch directly on top of it. And it really does help and it really will be a game changer if you're not always able to keep accurate seam allowances. It's really a game changer and it does really help. So now we're going to flip front slip pocket C and you're going to flip this over and you're going to press the seam allowance open. So you're going to press these seam allowances open. And I can't do this with my iron because one side, if you remember, I said I was using moon glow, this Moon Glow vinyl. So one side is that Moon Glow vinyl. So I'm not able to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just pressing it with my fingers and I'm going to hold it down as I stitch. And I'm going to keep checking to make sure that it stays pressed open. Cut all your threads, you don't want peekaboo threads later. And then top stitch the other side, so on top of B. We're 
return your stitch length back to your length you use for stitching a bag together. And that's how that looks so far. Now we need to attach D to the other side of B. So the exact same thing. Take D, place it pretty sides together with B. Pin it all the way on the short edge. And then you'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Press that seam open and top stitch on both sides of those seams. So the same thing we did previously. Make sure that seam is pressed open. top stitching on both sides of the seam so you're going to be top stitching on top of D and then top stitching on top of B. And whatever your favorite stitch length is for top stitching you'll want to use that. And I'm just going to trim my bottom it looks like it's stretched a little bit might have just been the cutter, not the vinyl. There we go. So now it's all even and that's how it looks. I have top stitching down both sides on both the B and the C and the B and the D and that's how they look all the way top stitched. Now we need to install the twist lock, the male part of your twist lock. And if you're using a magnetic snap, there are instructions in the on page two found in the important notes section. It's a lot of hardware. I'm just going to put some of this hardware the male half of the twist lock and you'll want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for how to whoop, how to install this and I always keep little baggies that I get when I place orders for hardware and stuff if they come in little baggies I always keep them for things like this so I can keep all my hardware together when I'm cutting open baggies like the ones that have for example like this that have um, screws so it just makes it so that I don't lose the little screws and it keeps everything together until I'm ready to use all the pieces so now what we need to do is on the wrong side there's a measurement you need to make from the tar top down and so you'll go ahead and make that mark which I did and then you want to find the center and then you'll want to find the center of your washer and we're going to use our washer to make the marks for the um, male half of the I'm trying to remember what this is called magnetic snap so the magnetic snap is going to be centered on those marks that you made use the washer to make your marks seam ripper and again if your mag if your um, wash or magnetic or not magnetic snap oh my gosh twist lock is installed different and it's a different twist lock use your manufacturer's instructions to install it 
Usually I use magnetic snaps, not twist locks, but I decided that I was going to use one for this tutorial and for this bag. So I've made all, I've cut all my slits. Now I want to apply some fray stop, or if you have fray check, on those slits that I made, and that just helps prevent that from fraying any further. Mm. My foot slipping on my bins underneath. So I'm going to push the prongs through those slits. Then I'm going to put the piece of interfacing I cut through the prongs, and then I'm going to put my washer on, and I'm going to then press the prongs down. And I just like to use this pair of pliers. These are just from the dollar store, so nothing super fancy or expensive. They're just small enough that I can use them. And I just press it in place. Then I'm going to apply a piece of tape over those prongs. I have to make sure I was grabbing my tape scissors. Don't want to gunk my other scissors up. Tip though, if you do get any tape from duct tape on your scissors, if you have um, some goo gone, you can take goo gone and rub it off, it comes right off, or even some rubbing alcohol will also help get it off, or hand sanitizer even. So I'm just going to pick up my clips. So now we have the first half of our twist lock installed, and we also have the, you can have duct tape off, covering your prongs, or a piece of interfacing, so fusible fleece, or your woven interfacing over top. Now we need to sew the po uh, pocket piece I, or lining piece I, together with this piece that we just created. So you're going to line up the top straight edges, and I know that twist lock is kind of in the way in pushing your fabric up, but we'll just work with it. Line up your center and your sides, and pin it all the way across. And then we're going to sew across this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And if you changed your stitch length for top stitching, go ahead and return it back to your stitching length. And I know that that magnetic, or the twist lock piece, the male half is in the way. So you will sort of have to maneuver it by your presser foot a little bit. You can use a zipper foot and that'll help keep your presser foot out of the way if you're finding that it's not got a lot of space there. I had it with my regular presser foot, it was fine. And my thread ran out. That's okay, I have another one loaded. I was prepared. Except for this one doesn't want to come out. There we go. Oops. So yes, if you use a zipper foot, it'll help give you that extra bit of room, or if you have a skinny foot, so like I do, I have a hinged zipper foot, it's a skinny foot I call it, um, it's an eighth of an inch wide, that'll get right by that twist lock here. So all I'm doing, because I, I ran, out of uh, ran out of bobbin thread, is I started stitching right over top of previous stitches and I backstitched, and that helps lock in those previous stitches and then also lock in the new stitches. And I'm going to cut the threads. So now we're going to flip the panel so they are right sides out, wrong sides together. And again, I can't press mine because I used a vinyl and this waterproof canvas. So I'm going to add some double-sided tape here to this edge to help hold that edge down for me. You can do the same thing if you've used a material that you can't press. 
So just placing my double-sided tape along that edge. double-sided tape along the edge here to press that side open. because that twist lock and I should have did it the other way. going to do, sorry about that, that took a little bit longer than I wanted. We're going to pin the sides and the bottoms together. So now that I have that pressed, that's just like I pressed it using that double sided tape. Make sure your pocket is also facing down. You don't want that to be flipped up. So pin along the side edges and we're going to baste this in place around the sides and bottom edges. And you'll baste it in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So now we're going to sew the sides and bottom using that seam allowance given in the pattern and that'll help hold this in place while we sew. So we'll also top stitch this top edge as well. And when you're basting, you can keep it at your top stitching length, that's okay. Basting stitches are hidden within the seam allowance. So as long as your basting stitches are within your seam allowance, it doesn't matter if they're perfectly straight or not, no one is going to see them. stitching you'll start then start at the bottom in the center go all the way up and come up to this side and then um, back stitch then you'll come back to the center here come all the way up and back stitch and that'll help prevent any of the shifting my fabrics didn't shift so I am good so we have this all installed just like that and you have your beautiful front with your twist lock or magnetic snap installed. Now you need to grab out your front exterior A piece and we're going to place this piece we just completed with it so that it is lining sides against the right side of A. And if you can still see your center marks, first line up your centers, which I can right here. Line up your centers. and then pin the rest of the way all the way around. And 
we're then going to baste this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, to prevent that shifting, you can start in the center, stitch all the way up to the side, top edge here, and then back stitch and come all the way back again to the center and stitch there. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just stitching right on top of those previous basting stitches when we basted the front pocket here together. And that is just going to prevent any shifting on me. And for this side, I have to go on the wrong side. Well, I don't have to, but I am. It's just easier for me. So far you have a slip pocket and inside you have this zipper pocket so that's handy for putting your phone in it'll be extra safe in there so there it is we're going to place this to the side for now and we're going to move on to making our front pocket flap so here is the flap pieces you should have two now mine are the same I did it in both the vinyl but you may have one that's your exterior or contrast and one that's your lining so my exterior piece has the interfacing on it and I've already made my marks for my magnetic snap or my twist lock I will go back and look and make sure when we finish constructing this that that is still in the accurate position so here it is now if you're installing a magnetic snap, you'll want to follow the instructions that are given for placement of magnetic snap now. Now we're going to take our two magnetic, our two flap E pieces and we're going to place them right sides together. And we're going to pin and I'm lining up my center points on both pieces just to make sure everything is nicely lined up. We're going to pin and we're going to sew around the sides and the curved edge. We're not sewing along this top straight edge here, just the curved, the sides and this curved bottom edge. Return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching. Don't forget to do that. trim that seam allowance down. That'll also help this lay nice and flat when you turn it right sides out. So I'm using pinking shears for this. My trimming tool. I'm going to turn this right sides out. And I can't press this with my iron because it's all vinyl. So I'm just going to really work with it here. However, you can go ahead and go press yours if you've used all quilting cotton. Press yours with your iron. I'm going to use some clips on mine. to top stitch this all the way around so you're going to top stitch the side edges and this top edge as well so top stitch all the way around and the top edge is really just a basting stitch at the top
take a shorter stitch length. There you have it. We've top stitched our flap. It's all ready. Now, if you've installed your magnetic snap already, this next step won't apply to you. I need to install mm. the final half of my twist lock. So what I'm going to do is do that. Use the washer to make the mark. These are my screwdrivers. lose that screw so I'm just going to put it in there. We're going to use this washer to make the line or to make the mark for where this is going to be placed and then cut it out. And I mark where the screw holes are too because I cut beyond that as well or to that, sorry, not beyond that. So with my seam ripper, and this is where you wanna be really careful and don't rush this part because you don't want to have any raw edges showing that when the bag is finished, for the flap, sorry. So just cut to where those screw holes are, go around. And if you have that tools that you can just use your hammer or a rubber mallet and it's a metal cutters for leather, you can go ahead and use that here as well. That'll make this really easy for you. And there we go, I've cut the hole. So you'll see there's the hole. And this fits in perfectly around the screw holes as well. And I'm going to use a bit of glue here to help glue this in place. Not a lot, just a little bit. And there's one screw. And I have these extra little screws here. I'll keep that in case I'm ever missing any screws for any other pieces. So you just want the tiniest amount of glue. Not a lot. Make sure your um, twist lock piece is centered and this is the female half so make sure it's centered and straight. put some in the screw holes as well and that'll help with extra security to make sure that the screws if they come out I need to trim that a little bit more just a slight amount had to be trimmed so I don't want to trim too much Just a sliver. Still more. Ah. There we 
There we go. Okay. And that glue dried on the back here. So I'm going to put it back on. If you're using a different oh, twist lock, you'll want to install it as per your manufacturer's instructions. And if you're wondering where I got this little screwdriver set, my husband picked it up for me at the dollar store. It's very handy because all the different sizes of screws that you'll need with different hardware. So it's really handy because you have all the different sizes of screws that screwdrivers that you'll need. And there's all sorts of sizes and the different, like there's the Phillips and the Star. So for the flathead, I mean, sorry. Okay, so now I have that installed, so there it is. Now we're going to take the flap and grab back out that piece that we attached that front pocket to. And I'm going to attach my twist lock, so I'm, I've locked my twist lock. And I'm making sure that I'm lining up the center points on the flap at the top with the top of the bag. And that makes sure that my flap stays centered and also so that I have it so that it is right sides up. And we're going to base this in place. there you have it. That is your front all complete. So remember I was saying I used the vinyl for my back of my bag and for this one I used that quilting cotton. That's so it peeks out on the sides here. I thought it would look really pretty with the sides. And I also fussy cut this panel B so that the flamingos would be seen in the center. So place that panel to the side for now. We are done with it for now. Now we're going to work on our exterior back. And for this we're going to start with piece F. And I'm just going to see, so this is this piece. So piece F is your back strip. So your piece will look like this right now. What you're going to do is draw a line down the entire length of the center. So in the center along the whole length. Once you have that done, you'll press the long edges in to meet that center line. If you're using material that you can't press with your iron, use some double sided tape to help hold it in place. And this will be finished and there is a measurement given in the pattern for what the finished width of this will be. So once you have that pressed, put that to the side. We'll then work on our connector G pieces. And the connector G pieces are folded the exact same way we folded that F piece. So draw a line down the center, fold your long edges into the center to meet in the center and press. I did use a bit of spray, so I have a spray bottle and I just spritz it a little bit and that really helps press these so they're nice and crisp. So I did that. Now we're going to top stitch along the entire length of all three of these G pieces. So I'm just top stitching down the length of all three. big chain. And then 
then we need our D-rings. And because I'm making the backpack and the crossbody strap, I have lots of hardware. So we're also going to be doing this for the connector R pieces as well. We're going to be top stitching those and adding the hardware, but I'm going to keep them connected together so I don't get confused. So top stitch down the connector R as well while we're doing this. together again because I have markings that I already made on these so I don't want to get confused with what's what. So now we have to take the D ring and we have to slide the connector G onto it, fold the connector G in half, and we'll do that for the other three. I was just checking to make sure it wasn't being folded a different way. Sometimes they are. And make sure the wrong sides of the connector, so where those seams are, are in the middle. Now we're going to switch to a zipper foot because we need to sew as close as we can to the hardware. So I'm just switching out to my zipper foot. I'll put back on my Teflon foot after. And now we're going to sew as close to the hardware as we can. So I like to start with my zipper, my uh, presser foot down and my needle down. Don't forget to back stitch. Cut your threads. So there's one, and repeat that for the rest. I'm going to repeat this too for the other connectors there. But I want to keep these ones together because again I have markings on these ones that go with the pattern. So I want to keep these three together. And also these are different lengths too so you got to make sure you pay attention as you're doing this so you don't mix up the lengths. Same thing, attach the hardware, fold it in so that the seams are in the center touching, you won't see those. If you're worried about that fraying, you can always add some fray stop along the edge. my needle down when I'm doing this is I just find I found that with my uh, industrial machine more than this machine but when I start with the needle down the, the fabrics tend to not shift sometimes I find I haven't had that problem with this machine but on my industrial if I start and I don't have the needle down it pushes the fabrics and then they don't stay all lined up nicely so I just do that now on this so I'm going to put connectors are off to the side for now because you just need to continue working with the back connectors for now. So we're going to put the back connectors just to the side for the moment. I'm going to switch back to my foot, my Teflon foot, which is my same as my regular foot. And now we need the handle. And if you're not making the handle, you'll skip this step. And I just want to make sure I do have the right piece. Yes. So handle is H, so you'll have a piece 
that will look like this. <clears throat> you'll do the same thing we did with F and the connectors. You'll make a mark down the center. You'll fold the long raw edges into the center, but don't fold them so that those edges touch. Leave a little gap just between. And the reason for that is we're folding it again in half to hide all those raw edges. And when you have them touching, what ends up happening sometimes is you get this bulk and you get a bit of a bulge here in this center fold. So if you have them spaced just a smidge apart, you won't get that bulk. And it still ends up being the same width, but it's just a little bit of a gap there to help with that bulk there. So now we're going to top stitch these with the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> Excuse me. across one short edge just so I didn't have to break stitches and restart. So there it is. We've top stitched both edges and if you're finding your handles twisting you can always just untwist it because the interfacing inside helps that or press it with your iron. Now we're going to attach the back connectors and the handle. So you need your back pattern piece and those G connectors, the handle, and F. So I've gone ahead and made some marks. You may be looking and thinking you have some marks. Yes, I do. So the first mark that you need to make is from the bottom up, and that is where you're going to place the first connector. So it goes from the bottom up at that line, and you're going to place it so it is centered on your panel. And you can use a little bit of double-sided tape here to help hold it in place. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to base the ends here so they don't shift on me. to use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place and you're going to want to switch back to your zipper foot because we're going to be sewing up close to that hardware as possible so center this and at that mark from the bottom up zipper foot put that on All right, and now we're going to sew this all the way around. And what you're doing is you're just following along on top of the previous stitching that you did. On top of your previous top stitching. there for that stitch because the hardware is in the way and I don't want to have any skip stitches. Cut your threads and now we're going to add our handle. Now that that is attached we're going to add our handle here. So your handle there is a measurement for how far over from this connector here how far over you're going to place it. And just to note, if you're not adding a handle, go ahead and skip this step and go to the next steps. So there's a measurement for how far over from the side edges of your connector that the handle is going to be placed. And I've already made those marks. So you'll place the raw edge of the handle at that line you made from the bottom up and the side edge at that mark so that it is the distance here away from the connector. So I'm going to, Stitch this in place, we're just basting it in place across the bottom. So 
So there's one. And making sure your handle's not twisted. So right now that's how it looks, flat. Bring it down and around and line it up with that next mark that you made so it'll look like that. And again, just make sure it's not twisted. We're going to cut all our threads. And that's how it's looking so far. I love it. I love the colors together. Now there's another mark you need to make from the bottom up. So from the bottom of your panel up to here. And that's where this bottom edge of your uh, back strip is going to line up. So the bottom edge of the back strip is going to line up with that line you made. And that covers all the raw edges. You can use some double sided tape here, which I will, to help hold this back strip in place. If you want, you can also pin it in place. I just like the double-sided tape because it makes sure nothing shifts on me. And I'm centering it because I did fussy cut this so that the flamingo's faces would be seen. I fussy cut as much as I could for this bag. So there it is. You'll see my flamingo faces and a little bit of the flower above them. So now we're going to stitch this back strip using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm going to switch to my regular foot. So stitch around. So I'm going to start on the side edge here so I can have back stitching where you're not going to see it. to do so you'll do the first row and what I'm going to do is just go up to where I need to and then stitch that second row to trim the back strip so it is even with the sides and I will go off camera and I will install some rivets I don't feel you need to sit and watch me do that but we can install some rivets where it is mentioned in the pattern so on the handle here I'm also going to install one on my connector just to give it some extra security. If you don't have rivets, don't worry. You can always use Chicago screws or you can just make a little box and sew a little box, then sew an X in it. And where this one is, what you would do is you would make the box and sew an X here. And that'll just add some extra security to your um, back of your bag to the handle and to that connector. So I'm going to go do that and then I will come back and we will continue on with making actually you know what? I'm going to wait and install those rivets because in the next steps we do have some rivets that we do put in. So I'm going to wait until we get to those next steps. So on these connectors, there are some marks you need to make from the bottom up. And I did have it, but I accidentally used <laughs> that one there. And that's just my foot again on the on my bins underneath. I have to put my leg up on it because my leg doesn't bend. So 
I have bins underneath my table to help hold up my leg, and then I also have a stool underneath to help hold up my leg when I'm sewing. So now what we're going to do, and I just want to make sure that Uh, okay, so I just want to make sure that I was giving you the right instructions. So you have to make a mark from the bottom up. And I've gone ahead and made that mark. Now what we're going to do is from the left corner up to the right hand side here where that mark is, we're going to trim that on an angle from bottom corner to the, that mark you made. And now you want to repeat that, but you want to have that on the opposite side. So it's going to be mirrored now. So you'll have two that will look like this. So one and two. So now what you need to do is we need to place these on the back of the panel at the bottom. And there's a mark you need to make from the bottom up. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've made my marks. I'm not sure if you could, yeah, you can see those. I've made my marks already. So you'll want to refer to the pattern for that measurement. So we're going to place these at that mark. And I'm just going to draw that line a little bit more actually you can see it and what you're doing is you're lining it up with that mark and with the side edge so there's the mark here and my side edge and that's what you're doing and it's going on that angle that you cut and that's why we cut it at the angle because it'll all line up with your side edges just like that so we're going to base this in place on the side edges. Just like that. And I did back stitch a few times. And I will note, when we do the bag binding, this is where you'll want to be cautious of what materials you're using for this step because it can add a lot of bulk and when you're doing that binding there is even more bulk here because you have that bulk you have your other your lining panel connected and then you're going to have this in here and your binding so you'll want to make note of that when you are cutting out your pattern pieces so now that I have that made we can go ahead and add our rivets to these connectors as mentioned in the pattern. So I'm going to add my rivets to these two bottom connectors, to my handle and to this top connector, and I will come back and we will continue on with constructing our bag. All right, so I've gone ahead and installed all those rivets, as I mentioned I would, so on my handles, on the connectors as well. So we are done with this back panel. We can place it to the side. We're going to move on to constructing our lining. And for this part, we need our interior lining piece, our interior zipper pocket pieces and our interior zipper for the zipper pocket. So there's all the pieces. I'm just going to move to the side what we're not using right now. On your end piece, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and make the marking for the zipper pocket opening. So you can go ahead and do that. And this is exactly the same as the zipper pocket that we installed on the front exterior. This is all the same method. So lining of or the right side of your M piece facing up and your zipper wrong sides together with the right side of M. Pin it across that top and then you'll sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Move your zipper pull out of the way. That just helps prevent that little lump that you sometimes get when your zipper pull is there. Trim your threads. And then, again, the next M piece, place it so it is right sides up. Place the zipper so it is wrong sides of the zipper against the right side of M. Pin it across that top edge. And then we're going to sew across that top straight edge. My zipper pull out of the way. Just be careful not to zip it right off the tape. 
If you are worried about zipping off your tape, what you can do before you start attaching your zipper is backstitch across the teeth a couple times near the edge and that'll create a bar tack or a stop so that you don't accidentally zip your zipper right off the edge. Now we're going to press this open just like we did in the previous steps. And I believe it was piece K that we were pressing open. And I'm just finger pressing this because I feel that I don't want to take this to my iron and maybe accidentally burn it. Now we need to take our lining L piece and we need to place that end facing, so the facing, interior zipper pocket facing, same thing, right sides together with the L and centered. So I'm folding this in half, my N in half and my L in half. And I'm going to then make a mark from the top down. And I just want to make sure it's from the top down. Yes. From the top down, and you're going to make a mark across the panel with the measurement given in the pattern. Once you have that mark, you'll then take N and place it right sides together with L and center it. And that's why we folded it so we can see the center creases. Pin it in place, and I'm pinning mine within the zipper pocket hole so that any pin marks that I have are made there where I will be cutting it out. Oh, there's two pins. Now we're going to stitch this the same way we stitched the previous one. So starting in a corner, and then I back stitch. And then stitch along that box. And remember, when we get to those corners, you can put your stitch length to zero, take one stitch, return your stitch length back to the length you're using, turn the corner, so all the way down to the next corner, one stitch with the short stitch length, return it and continue going to the next corner and that'll just help prevent those angled stitches in the corners for you. Now with my seam ripper again I'm going to cut down the center I'm going to use my scissors to cut the rest of the way and I'm going to cut little V's or making Y's into the corner. Careful not to clip those stitches. If you do, what you can do is just go back, stitch back over your previous stitches. So I'll show you as soon as I'm done cutting here. You'll start, so say you, you accidentally cut this corner here. You'll start back here a bit back stitch over these previous stitches to lock them in go all the way around down the corner and come back over here and back stitch here as well and what that'll do is that'll lock in those previous stitches so they don't undo on you but it'll also reinforce that corner again because you accidentally cut those stitches now we're going to push this through to the wrong side so you had seen me do this previously on the front pushing this through to the wrong side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use some double-sided tape to push it through and hold it in place for me so that I can attach my zipper pocket here. So I'm gonna go off camera and do that so you don't have to sit and watch me do that again because it was kind of time consuming and I don't feel that you need to watch me do that again. So I'm gonna go off camera, I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and we will continue on. Okay, so I've pushed the pocket facing through the opening and I've used my double-sided tape to help hold it in place because when I pressed my iron with this, it doesn't really press very good. Now we're going to install the zipper pocket, so piece M, or the two M pieces, and with the zipper attached into that opening. So you're going to center the zipper, again, same way we did for the front of the bag. So I'm just using a bit of double-sided tape here and I'm out of this double-sided tape. So I'm going to grab my other one. Okay. 
if you want, you can use pins instead, whatever method you use for holding your zipper pocket in place. Sometimes I use, when I'm not filming, I'll use masking tape to help hold everything in place. Or painter's tape. So peel back the paper backings of my zipper or double-sided tape. Center this in the hole. So you want your zipper teeth centered and you want the zipper pocket also centered on your panel. And you know it's centered because as I mentioned previously with the first side, with the exterior, the facing is the same size as the zipper and zipper pocket. And it's just a little bit wonky here to get it pressed. So now with the pocket open, so you want it to stay open, we're going to stitch around that zipper opening. And you can do as we did before, leave long tails, start stitching, go all the way around, come back to the stitch to the hole you started in, leave long tails and tie to pull them through to the back and tie them off. This is in the lining, so I've back stitched. I'm okay with that. see the back stitching too too much which is okay and same thing we did for the front of the bag we need to pull these down match up the sides and we're going to trim that bottom edge so that it is even with each other because one edge is longer than the other Now we're going to sew around all three edges because this is a bound bag, we're not leaving any openings. Normally you would leave an opening in a pocket or along a side seam or bottom seam. to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to back stitch and start and stop. tape there so that kind of helps hold it in place and there's your lining zipper pocket all complete we're going to place this one to the side we're going to work on our interior slip pocket so for that we need these O pieces my shoes falling off these O pieces and another piece A so we'll put piece A to the side for now O pieces they look like this you're going to place them so they are right sides together or pretty sides touching. 
you're going to pin the top edge, the top straight edge, and then you'll sew it with the seam allowance given in the pattern. all the way across sewing it and then you will press this so they are wrong sides together so I'm just pressing this seam open here it just helps press that top edge a little bit better You know what, I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to give it a press. Hopefully it, it helps press it a little bit. But I'm going to go take this to the iron and press it. I'll be right back. So I gave it a little bit of a press. It seems to be a little bit better and holding a little bit flatter than it would. And I didn't want to use more double sided tape because I feel like I've just used so much. So now we're going to top stitch this straight edge. And then we're going to baste the side and bottom edges. So I'm going to add some clips all the way around because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right from my top stitching right down to my basting. So I'm just going to go right from the top stitching and just baste it all the way around. And if you want you can do the same thing as I mentioned before which is start in the middle when you're basting the sides and bottom together and go all the way up to the top side and then go back to the middle here and come all the way back around. So with the top stitch length you like to use, top stitch the top edge. Just like that. And now starting in the bottom center, we're going to base stitch this. stitches when it did that it got caught on my light clip trim all your little threads and now you have your pocket basted and top stitched now we're going to place the finished pocket on top of your remaining lining L piece. You're going to line up these bottom edges. So the bottom edges and find the center if you can. So I'm going to just fold this in half and I'm going to line up the center points with the center point on the wrong side of my material. So line up the bottom edge, the bottom edge is the edge that has the curve, center marks, and then pin the rest of the way. So up the sides, so pin at the sides here, these top edges. And then we're going to base this in place all the way around the bottom and up those side edges. And again, you can do the same thing, start in the center. This will help prevent any shifting so you don't get puckering, say, in the center or at the top here. Trim your threads. center here to make it a divided pocket which I think I will so I'm going to do that now I'm going to stitch right on top of that line that I see where the fold is and 
And when I get up to where my top stitching is, I'm going to turn and I'm just going to stitch that way just to create some extra reinforcement at the top. Just like a little Y. It just creates a little Y. I don't know if you can see that, but it just makes a little Y at the top here, which helps reinforce the top of the pocket at the top. So you can divide this however you want. You can make it into, you know, little pen pockets. You can divide it however you want. I like this divided pocket because I have an EpiPen that I put in my pay in my bag. But also I know other people, you know, will want to put their, their phone in there or maybe slip their wallet into there or whatever. Any little items that they have in their bag that they want to put in the pocket so it's easier to find. So I just like having the divided pocket. And then you have the zipper pocket as well for some extra items. Now we're going to put our exteriors together. But before we do that, if you have a name plate or a tag that you want to attach, go ahead and attach that now. I don't have that, I'm not attaching it, so I'm just going to go ahead and put my lining and my exterior together. So the first two will be the exterior front with this lining slip pocket piece that we just did. So put the lining zip pocket piece, the lining slip pocket piece A, so it is wrong sides up. Place the main panel exterior so it is wrong sides against the wrong side of the lining. Line up your center marks. And I just push it, put a couple clips on each side of it. Line up the center mark again. clip on each side and then we're just going to pin it the rest of the way around. loving how bright and cheerful this bag is. I'm just moving it over because it seems to not be lining up and I want everything to line up. There we go. Uh, I didn't line up the center point correctly at the bottom here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to baste this in place all the way around. So you're going to sew them together all the way around. And the seam allowance is given in the pattern. And while I'm pinning, I'm going to actually pin the remaining exterior and lining together. And I'll just baste them at the same time. Well, not at the same time, one after the other, so I don't have to stop and pin another one. So there's the front. Here's my back. So long side down right side up. The wrong sides are what is touching here. Basting this, just be careful to make sure your handle is pushed down out of the way. You don't want that handle to get in your way. You don't want to stitch over the handle. so that they're stuck together so that when we attach the binding you have your lining exterior right sides or wrong sides together and then you have your lining exterior ready. Alright, 
So now I'm going to baste these together and I'm going to use a longer stitch length for this because it is a basting stitch. Don't forget to back stitch it, start and stop. Make sure your hardware is out of the way as you're coming to it. when it comes to this part because this will be hidden with all the binding and everything. I'm going to have to stop and go find that clip in a moment. So we'll get to this and then I'll stop and I'll go find that clip. Before Buddy or my other cat Missy find it. And I have previous stitching here, basting stitches that I can see, so I'm just stitching right on top of that. And that's from when we attach that pocket to the front. There we go. So now they are both attached. We have our lining attached to our exteriors. Again, your basting stitches don't have to be super perfect or super pretty as long as they're there and it's holding everything together. I'm just gonna pause the camera. I'm gonna go find that piece of the clip that broke and I will come back. All right, I found it. I'm not so worried anymore about the cats finding it. The next thing, if you don't already have them done, mark your centers at the top and bottoms of both these panels so that that is done. Moving on, we're going to make our main zipper closure. We're nearing the end. And you need your P exterior and P lining. So, oh, sorry, not your P. Not your Q, I mean, this is Q. I meant P and I'm grabbing P. P. Oh, wait. so here's P. We need the lining and the exterior. So with one of your P pieces right sides up, you're going to place your zipper so it is right sides together with the right side of P. And if you want, what you can do is mark the centers of your zipper so you can get everything all nicely lined up, which is what I think I'm going to do. I didn't mark the centers that way on these ones. I marked them the other way on the uh, panels. And I wish I hadn't. That's okay. You just fold it in half. Find your centers. And you'll notice I do use a pencil. I just use it within my seam allowance. Use whatever marking tool you want on the wrong side of your fabrics. I don't recommend pen. Pen can bleed. I use pencil because it's pretty safe. So now I'm just pinning one long edge of the zipper to the top long edge of piece P. And because it's centered, if my zipper is not cut to the right length, everything will match up later when we sew it. Return your stitch length back to the length you use for stitching. We're going to baste this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern. to take one of our lining pieces and we're going to place it 
so it is right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper and I just have to make sure yeah I wrote on that side it's hard to tell what's the wrong side and the right side of these of this canvas so I'm just pinning it together and I'm not worried about center marks because I can line up the side edges and then pin the rest of the way all right now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern all the way from one edge all the way across Make sure to slide my zippers out of the way. Now we're going to press both panels away from the zipper and I'm going to use some clips here and we're going to top stitch around the entire panel using the seam allowance given in the pattern and I'm going to actually switch to my zipper clip because I don't know if that was an accurate seam allowance. I'm going to do it again. It was slightly off and we want to be as accurate as possible. So I was just a little bit off, not by much actually, oh, not by much though. And I need to change my bobbin. I ran out right at the end, that's why I had that big thread. So I'm going to go change my bobbin and I'm going to fix that little thing here that keeps falling off. <laughs> Be right back. All right, so continuing on with what we were doing, we're now going to press these so they are wrong sides together. And I'm not gonna top stitch just yet, but normally you would top stitch all the way around all four sides, but I'm going to wait because I need to switch out my presser foot and I'd rather just do that all at the same time instead of switching back and forth constantly. So I'm just pinning these so that they're out of the way and they're wrong sides together. If you can, you can take this to your iron and press it. And now we're going to repeat that whole process for the second side, the remaining two P pieces. So I'm marking my center points. With the P exterior right sides up, place the zipper right sides together, line up those center marks and you'll be able to tell if it lines up because your side edges here will line up. with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Go all the way across. And you'll notice I just keep moving my zipper poles out of the way. Again, I don't want the bubbling in the zipper tape. Now we're going to place the lining so that it is right sides against the wrong side of the zipper tape. Line up the side corner edges. I 
pin it all the way across. And then we'll stitch this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And remember when you approach those holes to push them out of the way. So there's mine. And they're dangly, so I want to get them out of the way far enough too, so that I don't have them dangle backwards. And again, split them and place them so that they are wrong sides together and clip it all the way around. really important that this seam allowance is accurate because this will line up after with your gusset and you want it to be the same width. However, if it's not, you would just lay your gusset on top and trim the sides even, but trim from both sides. So depending on the measurement you have, you'll divide it in half so you have two and you'll take that measurement, half of that measurement off here and half of that measurement off the other side. That way there your zipper always stays centered. Now I'm just finger pressing this again. I do have my little roller, so I could use that, but I'm being lazy, I don't wanna take it out. Now we're going to top stitch across the edge where the zipper is, down the sides, around the bottom, and back up the other side. And you're going to do that on both sides if you haven't already top stitched. moving my zippers out of the way. Careful not to slide them right off your zipper tape. inside. when you have it all done. So there, I did it with two zipper pulls. You may have done this so you only have one zipper pull and that's okay, I just decided to make mine a double zipper, oh, double zipper opening. Now we need to trim the excess zipper tape if you have any, and I don't, mine seems to be good. And you need to check to make sure that this is the accurate measurement if it's not. So I'm going to, check this with this and it's the same width so I don't need to trim it but it is given in the pattern to trim it equally on both sides as I was stating. Now we need to attach those remaining connectors. So remember these connector are pieces that we already assembled. We need to attach them onto the ends here of this zipper closure piece. So there's a measurement in the pattern that you need to make from the bottom edge to here and you can see my mark right there. So measure from the bottom down towards the so from the bottom row edge towards the D-ring, you're going to measure and make a mark. I've already gone ahead and done that. Once you have that mark made, you're going to take this and center the R connector onto the teeth, and that line that you made will be in line with the raw edge here. So the line I made is lining up with the raw edge of the zipper panels.
and you're going to do that on both sides. So line it up. Oh, I guess I do have a little bit of extra on my zipper, but I'm going to leave that. That's fine. Needle down, and we're going to baste these in place. Repeat that on the second side. returning my stitch length back to the length I like to use for stitching. Now we're going to fold this in half and we're going to make the center marks on this gusset and you'll repeat that for the queue, the piece that I originally grabbed. And all these marks are very important for lining everything up later so you definitely want to make them. You don't want to skip doing this. Now we're going to grab Q and we're going to place Q right sides up. We're going to take these pan, uh, these are P. We're going to take the completed P piece and place it so it is right sides down so the exteriors are touching or pretty sides are touching. And we're going to pin the short edges together. So pin at the corners. And then pin the rest of the way. just like that. Then we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Make sure your D-ring is not down. You don't want to accidentally stitch over that. That's how it looks. So you have the exteriors right sides together. Now we're going to place the lining Q right sides together and you're going to line up those short raw edges again where we just stitched and then we'll sew this together using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again make sure that that D-ring is tucked up out of the way so that it's pointing down so you don't hit it. Sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Trim your threads. And I just want to see... Okay. Now we're going to do that for the remaining side here. So you have three edges that aren't attached. One, two, three. So now we're going to bring the zipper panel up to meet that raw edge that has nothing attached on the exterior. Line it up. And we're going to sew that in place. Again, make sure your D-ring is out of the way. Sewing along that straight short edge. Now, I'm then going to take my lining, making sure it's not twisted. So I lay it like this, so see how it's flat? And I'm going to bring this side, which is the right side, against the right side of the lining. And I'm pinning it together, and then I'm going to sew that short edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Just checking to make sure my D-ring is not in the way. I don't want to cause any damage to my machine or break a needle or anything, so I'm always checking that. And that's how it looks. See how it looks there? That's how it looks when you have them all stitched together. Now we need to turn it so that they are wrong sides together, the lining and the exterior, and we're going to top stitch the seams right here on the gusset and seam allowance here, so right under where the zipper panel is. 
bottom one, the Q piece, is where we're top stitching. And you can press this if you are able to. Take it to your iron and give it a press. I can't, so I'm just flattening it and holding it flat with my hand. And this is a bit bulky here, so your machine may struggle. If you're finding it struggling, try a bigger needle and try a walking foot as well if you're finding it struggling or skipping stitches through that bulk there because it can be bulky because you've got the connector and all those layers that you're top stitching through or if it's really struggling hand cranking over it as well will help to pin the edges together I should have did that before but I didn't I just went right to the basting uh, to the top stitching I skipped a step sorry about that but it all ends up being the same so it's okay So now we're going to continue pinning that and once we have it pinned we're going to baste the gusset cues together so that these are not left open. So I'm just pinning it along the whole length. And we're actually almost done. It's really exciting when we get to these final stages of the bag. And I like binding for some bags because it kind of adds a bit of a skeleton or a spine or bones. And it helps hold everything. It gives it that shape. It helps hold it. it gives it uh, some extra structure. So I like binding on backpacks or sometimes on other bags just for that extra bit of structure structural support so now we're going to stitch this together and I'm going to start in the center and sew my way over I'm just going to turn it so it's back wrong sides out or lining sides out and I'm just going to start in the center wherever the center is and you know what before I do that let's see if I can find my center marks here I want to mark that center mark again just so it's on the right side there we go your threads and I just have a bit of overhang here that I'm going to trim just to make everything even it's like my corners kind of there just kind of 
of shift it on me. So now we're going to add some rivets where we are instructed in the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and add the rivets and then we will come back for the final assembly. So continuing on, we are now going to do the final assembly and then once the final assembly is done, we will then make our straps. So first thing you need to do is grab your front exterior and you need your gusset. And I'm going to stand for this because it's easier for me with a bird's eye view. So with the exterior right sides up, you want your gusset so your lining is facing out. You're going to place it so that the exteriors are right sides together. So line up those center marks at the tops and bottom. And I line up the center mark and I add a couple clips. Oops. Line up the center mark at the bottom. And then just keep clipping the rest of the way. Now if you used a single zipper pull here, the note that was given in the pattern was that if you're using a single, single zipper pull, the zipper should be at the right when the zipper is closed. So you'll want to ensure that your zipper is going to the right. However, if you're preferring it to be closing at the left, there's no right or wrong way. You can definitely have it closing to the left as well if that's what you prefer, depending on how you wear your bag, when you're wearing it crossbody, or even if you're going to put it over your shoulder. pinning all the way around and what I'm going to do after I've pinned all the way around I'm going to end up making some clips or snips sorry in the curved edges here and that'll help the panel open up as I'm sewing so I don't get any puckers and just make sure you keep the snips within the seam allowance so that they don't show after or you don't have any raveling of your pot, uh, material. And I'm just pinning and you'll notice I start at the top and I pin around and then I get to the side and I sort of stop and then I go over to the bottom or vice versa. That's just to make sure everything is evenly spread apart or shift or dispersed I guess you could say so that everything is going to line up in the end. And I'm adding a few more clips just to make sure everything stays together. Nothing shifts on me while I am sewing. All right, so now as I was mentioning, in those curves, I'm going to place some snips just within the seam allowance. And that's just going to help open that up. And these snips will actually be covered later by our binding. Just in the curves. And I'm just going between my clips. So wherever there's a clip, right between them, I do a little snip. do this too when I attach the back to the gusset as well. Now as I was mentioning before there is a bit of bulk so you may need to switch to a bigger foot. You may want to also use a walking foot too. I'm going to use, just trying to roll back into the camera view, I'm going to use my extension cable some reason today I'm at a loss for words. I can't think, think of things. Maybe it's not enough coffee. So I'm using my extension table. That's just to help prevent this from falling off the edge so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to sew. And we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern all the way around. 
And she does mention to um, make those snips like I did. So you'll want to ensure that you've made them. Now, if you're worried about your stitches showing later, you can always use a thread that matches your materials and your binding. That'll really help everything blend for you. that you do not trim this seam allowance at all. Now, we're going to do the binding of the seam and as mentioned in the pattern, if you prefer to do a different binding than she's given, you can. I'm going to show you how I do binding, which I'm just going to see quickly if it's the same as what she says. It is not. So she has a different way of doing binding than what I'm going to show you. And that's okay, it's whatever works. You want to make sure you do what you're comfortable with and whatever is going to work for you. So this is how I do my binding. I place double-sided tape all the way around the bag and I'm going to place it on the exterior panel piece. And I'm going to go all the way around within that seam allowance, pretty much right against the edge of the fabrics and what this is going to do is it's going to hold the binding on on that side of the bag so that as I'm sewing I'm not worrying if that's shifting around on me or moving or anything it's held in place with the double sided tape and I'll probably need to stand up again for this final part Ooh stuck to me for this final part. Make sure your double sided tape is pressed down. Now sometimes my binding is not the nicest, sometimes it's alright, sometimes it's I can't believe I did it. The way I look at binding is you're not really going to see it because it's inside a bag. Nobody really looks there. And they're not going to look and see if your binding is nice and perfect so you don't need to worry about that so with your binding I'm going to place it so this center crease of my binding that center crease will be right with the edge of the fabric here so the edge of your seam allowance and I'm just going to do that all the way around And the nice thing about this pre-made binding is I didn't have to make it. it, saves a little bit of time, it's all pressed nicely, and it almost sort of matches. It's a little bit darker pink than the pink lining, but that's okay because this bag is full of different colors of pinks, shades of pinks. And as you're going, you're just smoothing it on. All the way around and I also have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for binding as I was mentioning before I will link that below in the description if you want to get more of an in-depth look at how I do the binding 
or you can use the way that's written in the pattern or a way that you know when I first started bag making I was doing binding like I would for a quilt because that's what I had started making was quilts so now I'm going to trim this just a little bit past where the first one is and I'm going to fold it so that there is no raw edge so I'm going to press that one short edge so that there's no raw edge showing and I'm going to wrap it around the first side so remember how we started so I'm going to take it first I'm going to add some double-sided tape to that to help hold it down just a moment Oops. So fold this so you have no raw edge on the one end of the binding and the other end has raw edges and that's fine. And I'm just repressing where I fold it, where it was folded originally. Now you want to take this end here of the binding that was already attached first and you want to bring it, open it up and you're going, oh my nail keeps getting stuck to the tape, it's hard to do it this way. You're going to bring the binding over and you're going to wrap it around the binding that is here. And if you're finding it's a bit too long, you can trim it. So you're bringing it over, wrapping this around the edge where you don't have any raw edge showing, the edge that we just folded, so that it tucks all the raw edges in. And what you can do is you can actually line it up, open it up, slip this one in, bring it around, and that'll just make sure everything's pressed nicely and neatly for you. And then when it comes to this side, you're going to do the same thing. Tuck it in, fold it over, and that's how it'll look. And you will have no raw edges. And I'm just going to fix mine a little bit more. I'm not too happy with how it... how it's looking. going to add a clip so you can see how there's no raw edges I've tucked it in completely now I'm going to clip it all the way around you can add another row of double-sided tape if you want but I'm just going to add some clips because I'm going to use my stiletto as I'm going around to help hold it in place as I'm sewing some clips to this side to help hold it down. And this gives me the opportunity to adjust as well. That's the nice thing about the double sided tape is it's not perfect so I just adjust. And if this part of the video is boring to you and you just find it's taking too long, go ahead and fast forward this to the next step when I'm sewing the binding. Or fast forward to the next steps if you're good at binding and you know how to do binding already you're not super concerned about watching this step. Again, my binding isn't always perfect, so don't worry about perfection here when you're sewing the binding on. Sometimes it's super perfect, sometimes it's not. Nobody really looks at this, especially once the bag is turned out. You really don't see the binding. It kind of all gets folded into itself. So you don't really, oops, you don't really see the binding. I gotta stop pulling on my table like that. You really don't see the binding as much. And especially when you have items inside your bag too, you don't, you don't see it. So now I'm going to sew the binding down 
all the way around using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So just take your time, sew the binding down. Try to make sure your corners are as nice as possible. make sure I caught all my binding if you didn't oh I skipped a bunch it skipped a bunch of stitches it's really weird so I gotta go back and sew where it skipped all those stitches at the bottom here for some reason don't know why that happened that's very very weird right where I started actually weird. That's okay. Not the end of the world. We'll just repin and re-sew. Or not where I started, where I where that seam is. And I back over it to make sure there we go. Everything was caught. So it doesn't look as pretty down there, although it doesn't really. Actually, it's pretty good because the stitching goes right over top of the ouch, the previous stitching. So we're good. So check to make sure you caught everywhere. As you'll notice, I did. I've caught all the way around and all the way around there. Now we need to repeat that for the other side. And I was going to go off camera to do that so that you don't have to sit and watch me do that a second time. Basically, you're going to repeat everything you just saw me do. Same thing, pin this right sides together and then do your binding all the way around. I'm gonna go off camera because I don't feel you need to sit and watch me do that. If you need to rewatch that, you can rewatch that whole thing that I just did for the first side. There's also going to be that little tutorial, but again, I don't want this tutorial to be too long. So I'm going to go off camera to do the second side and then I'll come back and we will continue on. All right, so I went ahead and did the binding on the second side. So now we can turn this right sides out. And this is where I might have a hard time, hopefully not. Binding, you could have turned your bag right sides out and checked to make sure there was no puckers. I forgot to do that, but before you did the binding, you could have done that. Mine is thankfully all a okay. So 
So we're just pushing out where the binding is. You're just giving it a really good push out because we can't really press, you could, you could press it, but I can't because, well, I used vinyl for my whole bag. So there it is so far. We have our little grab handle and everything else. Our exterior is complete. Now we need to move on to making our straps. So you're going to have some strap options. You can do backpack straps or a crossbody strap. I have these backpack straps here, so I'm just using the same material that I used for here for this B part. So you'll have your strap, and mine is a bit wider because I'm using bigger hardware, but that's okay. The hardware on the sides is still the same side because your swivel hook is clipping onto there. It doesn't matter really what size that is, but I'm using bigger because that's all I had. So here's how it looks. You're going to fold it in half so that the long edges all the way down meet. So you have it folded in half. You'll open it up and you'll fold those long edges in to meet that center fold. However, don't make it meet right directly in the center. Have a little bit of a gap. So you can see I have a little bit of a gap there. Leave a little bit of a gap so that when we fold it again, you don't end up with some bulk here in this seam making it look bulky and not as nice. So that's how you will fold the strap. Then we will top stitch all the way around. And I'm not going to turn those ends under because I'm going to use some strap end hardware on the end here. So I'm going to leave that end raw because my strap end hardware will cover that after. So I'm just going to stitch all the way around. you would have folded your short edges in so that it conceals the short edges. I also have a tutorial on my YouTube channel for how I finished the edges of my straps so I'll link that below as well but you'll fold it in just like that and then you with the measurement obviously that's not going to be the measurement but you'll fold it in with the measurement given in the pattern and then you'll fold exactly how I said so that you hide all those raw edges. As I mentioned I'm not I'm going to add strap end hardware to the end so I'm not so concerned about the raw edges because my strap end hardware will conceal all those raw edges. see they're twisted and that's what I should have done was stopped at one started at one end went all the way down to the other end and then came back and started back up here but I just went all the way around so I'm going to go and give these a press and I'll come back and we will add our hardware to one of them and then the other one I'll do off camera 
All right, so I went ahead and installed the hardware on the two backpack straps, so they're already done. But I have my crossbody strap here still that I can show you how to install your hardware. And I'm also installing the strap ends, so I will show you how to do that. Now, it can take a little bit of time because the screws are really small and I have a hard time um, holding them, but I'll try to go as fast as I can. So first thing we need to do is get out our slider. And you're going to put your slider onto your strap. So this is the wrong side because I made this strap double-sided and I'll link below how I make my straps double-sided so that you can make it double-sided if you want. And if you don't, then you can just follow the instructions in the pattern for making the strap. Now the, double, the crossbody strap is cut in two pieces. So you will sew the two short ends together press it open and then sew the other two short ends together for the second piece if you've decided to do two pieces like I did. If you are double sided, sorry. If you are just doing one whole long strap in one color like I did for the backpack straps, then you only have to sew one short end together because you don't have four straps like I did here to make them double sided. So you would short, sew one short end together, right sides together, press it open, and then press your strap the way I showed you how to press the strap for the backpack strap. So for your slider, again, I'm going to place this. So slide it up and over the middle bar and back down so that it looks like this. And I'm using a big swivel hook because, or slider, because I have some bulk here where I joined the two pieces together. So I'm using a bigger one so that I know it will fit. Now I need to install this little strap end. So I'm going to grab out the strap end. And my screwdrivers. So what you do is you take the strap end and you slide it on so there is a wrong side and right side of the strap end. The wrong side is the side that's going to have the screws. So if you're doing like I did a double sided strap, choose which side you want to be on the exterior and what side you want to be on the lining or wrong side. And that actually went well. So maybe it won't take me as long. Sometimes the screws I kind of figured it out when I was making the backpack strap, how to get it so that it doesn't do what it just did there. Because unfortunately these screwdrivers are not magnetic. Yeah, now it's happening. It's hard for me to hold these two. Alright, so put the screw in and we're just screwing these in. There we go. So the screw is screwed in. Now you're going to either sew this across here or add a rivet and I'm going to add a rivet so I'm just going to quickly punch a hole here with my punch. So this is my tabletop press and I'm just adding a hole centered because I'm using rivets to hold my strap together and I will press them clamp them closed once I'm done with the whole strap so that I can keep that there installed on that to punch the next hole. Now we need to install our strap, um, not our strap, our swivel hooks. And the nice thing about the double-sided strap is I know what side my swivel hooks need to go on. If you're not using a double-sided strap, then what you're going to do is lay your strap out on your table so that the slider is against the table and this part that you folded over is facing up and you'll Put that all the way down so that the strap is the wrong side is facing up. So the side that's going to be against your body is what I consider the wrong side. You're then going to take your slider and slide your strap through the hardware or the ring on the swivel hook. And the swivel hook is against the table just like that. Slide it on and then you're going to bring this loose end of the strap 
up through the slider and back down over that middle bar so you have it where it'll look like that. So bring it down and that's why I needed the thicker slider because right there is really thick. Just like that. Now we need to install the second swivel hook. So I'm just going to bring this so that it makes it a little bit smaller. So the second swivel hook. So again, with your slider against the table, I'm seeing the wrong side here of this loose end of the strap that doesn't have anything attached. Slide the loose end of the strap through the swivel hook, and I'm going to push it on as far as it can go. Because I want to install another strap end, and this is just an easy way and a really nice way to finish off your straps without having to worry about the raw edges, especially if you use something like a vinyl or a cork or a faux leather. It's just nice to have that option. And you can use some fray stop or fray check if you're worried about it fraying on you. And again, wrong side of the strap end is against the wrong side, or what the side that would be against your body, of the strap uh, I'm glad this is the last one Now sometimes I use glue, or almost always, and I forgot to do that here, but that's okay. They're on there pretty good, so I'm just going to put those away. And now we need to do the same thing. We need to fold this loose end over our, slide, our swivel hook and punch that hole, or if you're not punching holes and using rivets, you can sew a little box with an X, and if you're not adding the strap end hardware, make sure you fold those under as per the instructions and as I had mentioned to do previously. You don't want to have any raw edges if you're using quilting cotton. And I have a little tutorial on my YouTube channel for how I do straps if you aren't using webbing if a pattern calls for webbing but it really goes into a lot of detail for how I make my how to do straps so it's pretty handy I'll also include that in the bottom below the nice thing about these straps is you can use the webbing as well instead of making your straps you can use webbing so now I'm going to press all my rivets so I'm just pressing them press these ones while you're watching. So that's how you use my rivet press. That's what I do. It's really easy peasy. My husband got me this rivet press from, oh, I'm using the wrong sign. My husband got me this rivet press from Amazon, I want to say five years ago now. And it has been awesome to have it. And my dies I've gotten from different places. Some on AliExpress, some from Amazon. And I think I got some from, it's called Minkus Margo on Etsy. That was a long time ago. If you have a rivet press, you have to make sure that the die size will fit the size of your press. That's the only thing. So you have to know what size of dies your press takes. And I used smaller rivets here because it's not as thick, so it doesn't have to go through as much bulk. It doesn't need as long of a post. Can 
attach our backpack straps and you can really attach these however you want if you want the slider to be near the bottom you can put the slider near the bottom if you want the slider near the top so when it slides it slides down you can do that i have mine sliding up right now so you just clip them in place so now you have a backpack you can clip your side strap, your strap to the sides here, and you have a crossbody strap, or tighten it and you can make it into a shoulder bag, tighten it as tight as you want it to go and it can be a really nice shoulder bag. So there, there you have it, we have completed our Riva mini backpack with all its features including this really nice flap twist lock kind of extra security for anything you want to put in there you won't lose it you have your backpack strap or your strap here for crossbody so it makes it sort of a convertible bag which is awesome you're now ready to take this out and show it off to the world but before you do don't forget to take some photos and post them on social media so we can see them use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so we can easily find all your beautiful Riva mini backpacks and ooh and awe at them with you I do hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for sewing with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.